You, you want me to pour it or you gonna pour it? Typical mom, you, you have a child and the ultimate goal is to raise them to be the best that they can be for themselves. That's the same goal that we have as special needs parents. You plan, one, two, three, bam. Being a parent of a child with autism in the 80s and the 90s was very, very challenging. One for you, one for me, toast. I had never heard autism outside of Rain Man. I got books, I went to the library. Shave. Shave. But I still felt lost, like I just wasn't a great mom. And especially in the black community, resources were very, very limited. Handsome! We started really seeing a lot of behavior problems in Jason about three years old. Biting himself until he bled, head butting you, screaming all the time. And this went on for some years. Multiple cocktails of medication, changing doctors, changing hospitals, and most of it I did alone because my husband worked nights. I felt totally helpless. You ready? Let's go. My whole life revolved around finding services for Jason. To be able to get any type of assistance, I had to take a train, plane, bus, <laughs> and a, a magic carpet to get there. The support groups that I found, they were women living in affluent communities. I was the only black woman there. I was the only person that had low income. But the women, they were great. They were giving me resources, but they would say, oh, they only cost $500. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get groceries for next week. So imagine how I felt then, even more helpless. Alone, isolated, depressed, and only way that I found some joy was with the drugs. It was a refuge. I was a functioning addict. I still kept red lipstick on. I still was his mom. You still saw Jason with me everywhere I went. I kept things moving. So it made it linger on and on that I went to jail. Then as soon as I got out, it's just a cycle all over again. Insanity. When I did finally get clean, I made a vow that I wouldn't want any parent to have to experience what I've been through. Good morning. Everything that we provide is a blueprint of what I was missing. Hey, Jason. As a parent. Hey, yeah. Steven. I called the not-for-profit The Answer Incorporated because families are always asking questions, and we want to provide the answers. Have a good class, Drina. Okay. Every single Saturday, we provide tutoring, nutrition classes, cooking, socialization, Emma. life skills. Boom. Okay. We have the preteens, the teenagers, and the adults. You're gonna count one, one two, three. They're not just gonna be taken care of. The letter I. But they're gonna be educated as well. Can you stir this for me? Yeah. We want to provide them that outlet where they feel super special. We are a family. All right. The kids, they run up to you and they want to tell you what they learned. You like that? Mmm, delicious. Whatever's a big deal for them is a big deal for me because our kids don't have a lot of friends. And to be able to provide that opportunity brings me joy. My daughter Monet was officially diagnosed with autism in the fifth grade. But then after that, there was no programming and then Deborah reached out to me. Monet, she's a very shy girl, but from that first day, she's just really blossomed. Can you shake my hand? She is getting social skills. Shake my hand so that we can show very good. Thank you so much, man. Everybody yeah. She uses her words more. She has friends. Do you remember what we made the last time we um, I was here? Onion. Egg rolls. Egg, Egg rolls. rolls, exactly. She's like so excited. Every Saturday morning, she's up earlier than me. Mom, let's go. Mom, 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 mom. And so it's a great feeling. I got that old cooking. All right, now you're good. I want the parents to be able to drop their kids off and know that they can take that deep breath for three hours. Teaching them how to sit in front of a computer. Right. We actually started with just a support group because women want to be able to talk about what they're going through. There's also those other struggles that sometimes we don't talk about. <laughs> yeah. Men come to our support groups as well. But, you know, we learn from each other. Having a child with a special need, we carry so much. She's going to camp for the first time tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'm, I'm just so scared. I feel like I've always wanted her to have the friend that she... That's okay. That's all right. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah.
it's very scary for a parent to feel like they're alone. A lot of black and brown children have autism, and yet the programming is not here for us. I see you, Ms. Thank you, baby. It feels good to know that when I talk about an experience, and I don't feel that I have to explain, you know, because that's something that we go through. Good morning, Jason. Good morning. With autism, we want to make sure everyone is educated. The churches, department stores, the legislators. I love you, Jason. I love you. Oh. And it's so much that, have, that has gone on with police officers, with our special needs community. Cervantes, who has special needs, was shot and critically injured by deputies. They were told that he was autistic, told that he's deaf, told that he was unable to respond to cues like everyone else. Jason had a, a medication meltdown where he was very, very violent. And I had to call the ambulance fire department, call the police, and they came in with guns drawn. I'm telling them all the time, there's no weapons. My son has autism. They weren't hearing anything. So are we ready? Is everybody here? We want to make sure that the first responders are trained in how to deal with our children. I had a situation with Jason, and they didn't know how to handle him. They didn't know how to handle me. You know, I don't blame them because they just weren't trained. People are afraid of what they don't understand. We have a lot of children. They don't have great social skills. Hey, Jason, how are you doing? I'm uh, doing. Good, good, good. Good, good. good. How, how long has your mom been doing this kind of stuff? <laughs> because he's smiling, it makes it a little bit easier. But what if you get a hold to somebody that's not smiling? And they run it around and they, and, they, and they bite themselves. And I'm proud to say that just about every village within the township has been trained on the signs and symptoms of autism. I was just like, wow, this is really informative. And uh, I haven't had very much interaction with people with autism. So this is uh, really informative, especially with my line of work. Thank you. Thank See you, you soon. Yes, <laughs> Ooh, Jason, I see you. Advocacy is a gift. I'm good at it, and it makes me feel so good. Well, then we can just start a parent group in, the, in your area. If I come to them. That's my high now. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are kind. You are kind. The love and the support that Deborah and her staff give, it makes me feel good. And I'm different. I am different. And I love every bit of it. And I love every bit of it. The answer is really, truly that. We've helped over 4,000 families. When I look back over my entire journey, I can't say nothing but thank you. Jason has taken me places that I never thought that I would go. But it made me grow up to a woman that I never thought that I would be.